the pleasure of welcoming you to Pamela May Ross. I've met Pamela many times, all online Twitter, and then in real life three or four times. And uh, we Skyped a lot, too, to yes. <laughs> get a website going. So with that said, Pamela May Ross. Thank you so much, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph and Mila, and to our sponsors for this great event. Um, Ted talked about be, uh, humble, that, that, that humble feeling. And I have to say, I feel so humbled and so honored to be uh, included in the speaker lineup today with people that, I, that inspire me every day. Um, now, I, um, I am an HR professional, so I'm not an expert in social media, I'm not a marketer, and I'm looking to people on Twitter every day to teach me, and I learn every day, and there's not a day that goes by that I'm not amazed by the magic that can be created through social media. So it's actually become a passion of mine to help other HR professionals realize that magic. Now, I'm gonna ask you to bear with me for a minute because I am a trainer and an HR person, so I know that you've all been sitting for over an hour, and that's a long time. So I'm gonna ask you to, to bear with me and do a little experiment. Can I get you to stand up if you have a Facebook page? Or, or a Facebook profile? If you're on Facebook. I should have said stand up if you're not. Um, <laughs> okay, now keep standing if you're on LinkedIn. Sit down if you're not on LinkedIn. How about Twitter? If you're not on Twitter, you can sit down. Okay, that's much what I thought. You can all sit down now. Um, kind of an accident. <laughs> I know, I could go on and on. And, and I do this with HR groups that I speak to, and you know, it's a kind of an exercise in redundancy with this group because you're all here because you get social media, you are social, you're on social media. But when I do this with HR groups, I'm lucky if half of the group stands up because they're on Facebook, and they're really only there to connect with people that they were in high school with, or maybe if they're a recruiter, they're starting to explore that. Um, maybe 5% of people stand up because they've ever been on Twitter. And I think this is an issue. And we heard Kat talk about how social media is starting to transform HR. And I think that's important because HR needs to play a role in creating what, what we're calling social business. And you know, as they start to dip their toe into the social waves, they need help. And so it's kind of become a passion of mine for, to help them to realize what social media can do, both for themselves and for their business. And today, I'm gonna to focus more on what it can bring to, to the business and, and your workplace, um, because we all know how it can really impact you personally. So I think Kat also talked a bit about Generation Y and the digital natives entering the workplace. These people expect to be able to share friction, frictionlessly. That's a, that's a tongue twister. They expect to be connected all the time. They say things like, I can't work without my Facebook. So how do we now connect and engage a workforce that expects that sort of, that sort of thing? And it is scary, especially when you don't know and you don't understand the risks that are involved. So, you know, part of educating HR is, is helping them understand what, what Twitter is, what's Dropbox, what does it mean when someone leaves the company and still has access to, to their Dropbox files? Unless HR understands what all of these social media, you know, repercussions are, it's really hard to protect the organization, and HR does have a role in protecting the organization from these things. So part of it is helping to educate HR, and I actually ask for your help, being social media experts far more than myself. Um, if you know HR people, help them get a Twitter account. Help them understand the kind of conversations that happen in social media. And it's scary, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about some of the fears that I hear from, so, from HR professionals or from business leaders that aren't involved in social media. One is about productivity. You know, my employees aren't gonna be productive if I open up access to Facebook or to these social tools within the workplace. Another is this impact of kind of a megaphone effect of social media. So if my employees are unhappy with something that's happening at work, they're going to go on Twitter or on Facebook and share that and that's scary. So my answer to this is actually, it's not social media that's creating those problems, it's the culture or the engagement of your employees. 
the a, product, a non productive employee is going to find a way to be not productive, whether they're using social media or not. So, you know, I'd rather see what they're doing, see what they're posting, be able to answer those, those questions, be able to answer concerns, and know what's bothering people so that I can engage them better. So, certainly, there's risks, but the more we understand social media, the more HR can can really play a role in creating better culture. So that's where, uh, you know, again, I ask for your help in educating them, and I, I work on educating HR professionals about how they can bring social media within the workplace. But the thing is, it's not just about the tool, it's not about, about technology, it's actually about culture. And this is where I think there's a great lesson in social media as well. Social media campaigns, the really successful ones, are all about listening, connecting, and engaging with fans and customers. Really successful organizations within the workplace also do these things within the workplace. When you look at engagement, it's a, you know, the, the Gallup 12 questions, which are kind of the recognized uh, questions for, for measuring engagement, they're about, feel, I feel like my opinions matter. I feel like I have a friend at work. Um, Let's see, I feel like I have the opportunity to do what I do best at work. And by using social tools and creating a more social business culture, we can engage people in these ways. So I've been fortunate to work in social businesses before social media was around. I was a community manager because I was a, I was a bartender. And I think, bar right? I mean, come on. <laughs> what, who's a better community manager than a bartender? My job was to listen to my, to my guests at the bar, you know, connect with them, engage them, connect them to each other, and really create a community in my neighborhood. So I was fortunate to work with a really, in a really social business. And getting into HR and looking at the employee experience and how we made the employee experience social um, you know, was, was really fascinating. And now we have tools to help. So in the restaurant business, we used to recruit in a social way. We had team interviews. Um, the restaurant I worked at was all about being fun and, and being a little loud and, and out there. So we had people stand up and tell a joke in front, of, in front of the other group of interviewees. That was creating that social culture right from the beginning. Now there's lots of tools that you can use socially to, to kind of measure whether someone would be a fit with your culture. So you can have employees posting YouTube videos about what it's like to really work here. You can have um, candidates asking questions and real employees, real employees answering them. You can use Facebook to create talent communities. There's all of these great tools to, uh, available to us, but the important thing is to create an authentic candidate experience, that it really actually matches your employment brand and what they're going to experience when they get in. Otherwise, it's just going to be not a fit when they get there. So it's about the culture, not just the tools. In the restaurant industry, we used to, to train people in groups and create a learning community of people who were getting trained together. So they had peers to go to with questions and work together on, on things. Now, there's tools, and, and I think Kat talk, touched briefly on this. There's tools to create learning communities. Have people an ask questions to experts in your, in your organization, and have people who are being recognized for being an expert in that field be able to answer those questions. Have, uh, you know, if you have a training course, you can then create a community around the learning around that, and the impact of the learning then carries on be beyond the event of the learning activity. So there's some great ways that companies can use social learning. Imagine an organization where people feel trusted and feel valued for their opinion and in on things. It's that collaborative, net, collaborative feeling. Everyone working as a team towards a common goal. Ga gamification. We used to play games during training. We'd have people work together towards a, co towards a, a goal. They would win prizes. This is, this is a balloon race we used to do. I can explain it later. It's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> But now you can use software like the software that Kat talked about um, to create collaboration within a community. And I'm talking to companies all the time that are using this to now be able to collaborate, to, to test out products with their employees, to get their employees' feedback on what this will actually do when it rolls out to customers and fix the kinks before it gets there. So imagine the impact of using the collaborative network of your employees to improve your customer experience. That's where it really becomes magical. Imagine breaking down all the silos of, of a workplace. Um, 
companies who are using different software for, for project management or for looking at talent development or for collaboration are seeing the impact of being able to connect with people that you may not have ever met. Maybe they work globally, maybe they work in another province or another state, but you're able to actually connect with them online before you make a phone call or ask for their help on a project that you're working on. You're able to post where you're at with that project online so everyone knows and they're not calling you daily to find out. So the impact on productivity is amazing. Social recognition. In the restaurant industry, we used to do this just naturally. We were constantly recognizing each other. There were no silos. It was, it was all about recognizing great performance. Um, now, there's tools that you can use to, to recognize. There's gamification with badges and recognition and peer-to-peer -peer recognition with social tools. So again, you need to create the culture that feels like they want to recognize each other, but then use the tools to do it. So if I can leave you with a thought, it's not just about using social, it's about also engaging HR and creating a culture throughout the employee experience to actually be more social. And when we can be social and use social, we can engage these digital natives in different ways, engage our customers in different ways, and that's, what's all, that's what starts to create extreme engagement. Thank you very much.